Welcome to another edition of Titbits from the Acts of the Apostles. We have now arrived in chapter 12. This is a chapter where Luke tells the story of Herod the King. First, he tells how he executed James the Apostle, how he put Peter in jail, how Peter was miraculously released by God, and then in the end of the chapter, Luke shares the account of the dramatic death of this particular Herod. Who was he? Now, to, to trace the family line of Herod the Great, the grandfather of this Herod, is quite a task, and many commentators put up in graphic forms the various family connections. As I said, this year the king he is a grandson. He is therefore also the third Herod in the story told by Luke. He was also called Agrippa I and had another son, Agrippa II, who later on in Acts uh, 26 and 27 appears as the Agrippa we know Paul, to whom Paul preached. Now, here the great was the famous king, of course, who uh, killed the infants at the time of Jesus. His grandson here seems not to have been much better, at least from the perspective of the Christians. However, it is told in the account by Luke that the Jews were fairly pleased with the fact that he executed James, the, uh, the apostle, the brother of John. James was executed by a sword. That was particularly shameful, actually, because execution by sword was uh, especially designed for murderers and apostates, indicating here that the reason for the execution of James was that he had committed blasphemy. He was obviously not a murderer. He had committed blasphemy. So, the fact that he worshipped Jesus was taken as blasphemous. And that is an interesting indication of the high regard that the Christians held in Jesus. They worshipped him as a god. In the end of the chapter, it is told that the word of God increased and multiplied. They, the story is a story about the progress, the victory march of the Gospel. So one major reason to have this account of Herod the King in the midst of Acts is to tell that the Word of God will succeed in spite of all opposition from even the highest powers on earth. That is implied by the way the story is told several ways. First of all, there is a marked contrast in the story between the human power and divine power. Let me share some of the contrast. James is executed by Herod. Peter is miraculously delivered by God. Herod exercises force against the Christians, but he cannot in the end withstand the power of the God of the Christians. Herod hatches an elaborate scheme to keep Peter in prison, but God gives specific instructions leading to his release. Herod carried the favor of the Jews, but he lost the favor of God. And then there is a curious little detail. When the angel wakes up Peter in the jail in, during the night, it is said that he struck him. Now some translations soften that expression, but the, he, the, the Greek expression uh, patasso is certainly meaning strike. This is a strange word in the context. Did the angel hit or strike or smite uh, Peter? But here is the point. The same word is then repeated in the end of the chapter when in chapter in verse uh, th 23 it is said that immediately the angel of the Lord struck Herod down. So here you have a literary way of 
underlining this contrast between the power of humans like Herod and the power of God. In the chapter there is also another interesting comparison. There is a parallel between the experience of Jesus and the experience of Peter. James first is killed, he is executed, he is put to death. Of course, Jesus was the same and the same Greek word anaireo is used both in Luke in the Gospel and in Acts. James is executed like John the Baptist with the sword, indicating that the execution was a forewarning of the fate of Jesus. The death of James could be an omen of what would happen to Peter. The arrest of both Peter and Jesus takes place during the time of Passover. That is significant. It tells about potential death and also resurrection from life to life, of course. Both Peter and Jesus are handed over, and the Greek word silambano is used in both cases in Luke 22, 54, and here in Acts 12, 3. And here it also intends to present Peter to the people, just like Pilate presented Jesus to the people in Luke 23, 13. After Peter's deliverance, a woman, the servant or slave girl, Rhoda, shares a report, I have seen him. We also have a woman reporting the resurrection of Jesus to his disciples. And those who received the good news could not believe it at the time of Jesus' resurrection and they had a hard time believing it here when Peter stood outside uh, the gate of the house of John Mark's mother. Peter is mistaken for an angel, most likely the guardian angel, just like Jesus was mistaken at first for a ghost. And both Peter and Jesus explains what happened, has happened and they issue a commission. Peter tells them, go and say this to James and the brethren. And then they mysteriously depart. So the narrative in Luke 12 is told in a way to remind us of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So even when Christians are facing potential death in the prison, so even when that is the case, the power of the Word of God is victorious and is able to overcome all human forces. And the chapter then closes with a note that Paul and Barnabas, or Barnabas and Paul, to take the right sequence, return to Antioch. So we have moved with from Jerusalem being the focus geographical center to Antioch and that's where the next part of the exciting story of the early church takes its starting point in chapter 13. Welcome back when we look at tidbits from that chapter.